What's up guys, welcome back. We're gonna do a little video going over to Sierra F-150R, then we're gonna close out a little later doing some snow biking. I hope you guys enjoy. We're out here with one of the most asked about bikes that we've got, the BBR Perimeter Framed 150R race bike. So we're gonna give you guys a rundown on what all we've done to this bike and what you guys can do to yours. Back in 07 when the 150R was released, it had a lot of hype behind it because it was the first race mini four stroke on the market. Guys like Cooper Webb, Joey Crown had a lot of success on these on the Super Mini and 85 classes. But pretty soon the 150R turned into more of a four stroke play bike because the two strokes were a lot less complicated for the Super Mini classes and these were really complicated to try and get to run perfectly each time. The 150Rs haven't been updated much over the years. In 2012, we got a new head and carb, but other than that, they haven't received many updates. These are still one of the best selling bikes on the market because kids that are trying to race, girls, adults that don't want a big bike, guys like me that just love riding these things, they're awesome bikes and I see why these sell so well because they're fun for just about everything. Everybody always asks about the perimeter aluminum frame kits that VBR did for the 150R. They handcrafted these things right out of Auburn, Washington back in 07. They did about 100 of them. They were full aluminum frame kits that came with tanks, radiators, and the whole deal. Most of them went over to Europe because the 150 racing is huge over there. They actually did 10 MC2 Special Edition 150R frames also that Jeremy McGrath signed the titles to all 10 of them. BBR only did these frame kits for about one year back in 07 because then the recession hit, the lead law went into effect and it kind of ended the fun for the motorcycle industry for a few years in there. We kept updating this one for a little bit. We put on the bigger WP forks off of KTM 85. It's got the longer swing arm. BBR was doing the longer swing arms for Mumford over at Geico, so that's what this has, and uh, pretty much just kept updating it a little bit along the way just to keep this thing fun for me as I grow up. I'm ready to just absolutely send this thing in the mud for you guys today. So another thing I want to go over is Honda actually makes two different types of 150s. The 150F, which stands for fun, and the 150R, which stands for race. The 150F is awesome for deep woods riding, off-road, trail bike, conventional forks, air-cooled motor, beast in the woods, so much fun. We'll do a whole video on that thing for you guys soon. And then obviously the 150R, full-on race, so much fun on the track. and. Two completely different bikes, but awesome in their own ways. There's a million people in my DM saying they can't get their 150Rs to quit bogging. They won't start, they're not running right. Take that big nut off the bottom of your carb. Take that pilot jet out. If you can't see through that thing, it's not gonna run good. The ethanol gas will mess these things up. So always try and run non-ethanol if you can. And when you're done riding it, turn the gas off, run the carb out of gas, or just drain the carb itself, and it'll save it for the most part. Another thing that helps that big off idle bog is down on the carb, there's that black cover and you can go under it and adjust the accelerator pump. Typically these things have too much fuel going into them, make them miss. There's a bunch of YouTube videos on how to adjust that thing. It's a little bit complicated, but it definitely helps this thing. I've basically got the thing wired shut on this so that won't bog. Back in 07, these things got a pretty bad rap for not running very well. But what people don't realize is these things actually had a recall. The sprocket on the cam was twisting, making the timing go off felt like a carburetor issue. A bunch of people wrote these things off. 
but you'll know if these things got the recall or not because after a 17 digit number on the head tube, they put a punch mark at the dealership. We've had a bunch of these over the years. None of them got the recall done to it. The easiest way to fix it is put the hot cams in it. Problem solved. The other day I had a cool opportunity to go snow biking for the first time. Luke and Brett Barrick from Diesel Works told me to come ride their timber sled, so I got some footage for you guys to check out. These things are absolute units, man. Bro, we got his mittens and stuff. How am I doing, boys? Awesome. Amazing. Did you have fun? Oh, having a blast. This is so much fun. All right, guys, that's it for us. We had a blast as always. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to keep seeing videos like this and put a comment down below of ideas that you got because we're always looking for cool stuff to do. I just threw some red grips on the beast and I feel like we might have a little bit too much red going on here now.